Hey, people, this is mostly sci-fi. Long time, no see. This is a long time since I've done like a kind of like a, a lecture on uh, the alien, the xenomorph. I figured I'd do that um, because it's going to take me just a little bit while longer to finish uh, Original Sin. Um, this I'm halfway through chapter 17. And then chapter 18 and the epilogue is just huge. So that's going to take me a while. So I figure after I do, you know, I'll do half and then I'll speak about uh, what's going on in the alien universe to give you some like filler until the chapters come out. Um, so we're, we're pretty much, I pretty much just wing a lot of these episodes like this kind of thing. So uh, don't expect any kind of super professional stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're all waiting for Noah Hawley's Alien TV series, which I think is going to be, in my opinion, I think this is going to be breakthrough. It's going to be a, uh, a big breakthrough since uh, Loken Camp was trying to do something. And, I, you know, Rip, this is this guy, what's his name? Ridley Scott. He, in my opinion, like, he is very, very arrogant, even though he's a, he's a genius in making films. He's a very, he's a very arrogant person. Okay. And in my opinion, we won't see the alien universe get going, really get going. And probably until he passes away. Now, this guy is like 84 right now. And I don't know how long he got, probably before he becomes incoherent and, you know, senile. I'm not trying to speak ill of the guy, but how long does he have? Like, probably like, I don't know, six years. I mean, there are people that are doing it, like uh, Clint Eastwood. He's like 90-something, and he's still making films. But I think after a while, you got to kind of sit back and let other people... Uh, continue the story and he doesn't really want to do that I think because he's worried that other people will mess it up but I'll talk about that a little later um, so Noah, ha Noah uh, Hawley he's supposed to be coming out with a TV series where that where it takes place on earth which I can't see realistically how this is going to go um, because I mean, realistically and logically, if if it's a, if it's on Earth, right? Does that mean that the the xenomorphs will be on Earth? Because for me, if the xenomorphs are on Earth uh, and they've already reached Earth, then it's pretty much all-out war, then, right? Because these things breed like roaches. And if you look logically at real life, if you're looking at it as you know, at real life. If you see roaches, you see um, like something like COVID-19, the cough, right? Once an organism gets its claws into the human species and it's able to pro propagate very fast, you know, like lice, like uh, roaches, flies, you can't just get rid of them like that. You know what I mean? So this is a big turning point if they are on Earth. Like, realistically speaking, I say if they're on Earth, then it's over for Earth. Because the main point of all these movies is, is not to let these things get to Earth. And Noah Hawley is making one about them or this TV show being on Earth, which is kind of like, to me, I don't know how this is going to go. Unless there's something coming to Earth and they're preparing or greedy corporations. What I was reading is that it's going to deal with like greedy corporations trying to get their hands on the technology of and the the biological components of uh, xenomorphs. So there's a guy named John Landgraf, and he said that it's going very well, and that this is going to be a beast of a uh, a series. In my opinion, I think this is, if they do it right, 
it's going to be very good because uh, Noah Hawley, it's, he's, this, he's a good filmmaker. If you've seen Fargo, uh, he did an excellent job, okay, uh, at mimicking the Coen brothers' atmosphere, right, and, and feelings, right, and these kinds of things. He did it very well. So what I think he's going to do, he's going to kind of carbon copy uh, Ridley Scott's kind of atmosphere because atmosphere is very, very important uh, in this. So John Landgraf says, I'm going to just kind of read this really quickly. Oh, good. It's short. So it says, uh, Noah, Noah Hawley's Alien TV series will probably debut in 2023. They said that it was going to come in 2022, and I was waiting. I was like, yes, it's 2022, and now they're pushing it back to 2023. Now, my opinion is that, listen, take your time, okay? If it takes you that long to do it, don't rush anything. There's nothing else like it, so it's not a threat, okay? There's nothing else that's 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 that can threaten this TV series um, that is anywhere near close. You got Apple's Invasion which is about these kind of aliens that want to take over Earth and whatever, that's going to be nowhere near the, I think, the quality of of what FX is doing. Okay, so it's not, uh, there's no competition, all right? People are waiting, and if it takes you all these years to do this, then do it. Um, just like with The Witcher. So The Witcher, we've been waiting for like, what, two and a half years for The Witcher to do a season two? Season one was good. First, you you, you look at it the first way through. First time through, you, you're utterly confused. But the second time through, that's I guess that's how it's supposed to go. Um, it was it's, it's genius. Okay, so I'm, you know, I'm waiting for that. But now we have to wait a whole another year. Uh, and more and some change for um, whatever the name of this new alien project is called. Okay, so uh, Noah Hawley's alien TV series will probably debut in 2023. FX chief John Landgraf says FX is, is very good at doing stuff, so don't worry, man. I think they're going to do a good job. I'm um, speaking during. The Television Critics Association press tour on Friday, Landgraf said the series based on the world created by Ridley Scott and later James Cameron is a very expansive. It's very ex expansive to make. It's a beast. He said, I have optimism it will roll out in 2023. Uh, it probably will roll out in 2023. We're well into it, he added. It's a really big world-building exercise. Now, that's a very good thing to hear. It's a really big world-building exercise because Alien's universe is huge. If you don't know the books, read the books. It's huge, huge, huge stuff, okay? Um, the series will be the first alien property be to be set on Earth. Not really. I mean, you had uh, Alien vs. Predator, those two, they were set on Earth, and they're part of Alien Universe. And to add the the, the the Queen Xenomorph, remember her, she was on Earth, right? You remember when that black girl was fighting the alien, it, it came out the Arctic Ocean or some stuff? So, and is being billed as a blend of elements from director Ridley Scott's original 1979 film and James Cameron's more action heavy follow 1986 aliens while no plot details have been shared it has been shared i told you they're dealing with like some greedy corporations wanting to get their hands on some alien technology or whatever um while no plot details have been shared besides the setting harley had previously harley had previously said that it will not revolve around sigourney weaver sigourney weaver's ripley now I, this i agree with because i'm kind of thinking she's too old Pretty much, and if you're going to do Sigourney Weaver, it gotta be a movie. It can't really be a TV show, you know, because TV shows take less money to make. But I think they should just throw the whole kitchen sink and just start spending money like crazy. If you want something, if you want that to be like a, um, 
like a Dexter project because you know they got the new Dexter out and the rating is like 9.5 and I've seen it it's really good can we get a 9.5 alien television show I would love that um, here I have my fingers crossed uh, she's one of the great characters of all time, he told Vanity Fair last month. I think the story has been told pretty perfectly, and I don't want to mess with it. To date, the Alien franchise spans six films in addition to the joint Alien vs. Predator spinoff series. The two most recent entries in the series, prequels Prometheus and Alien Covenant, saw Scott return to the director's chair after handing off the franchise to Cameron and to other directors for the first few follow-up films. So, for me, um, Alien was good. Uh, Aliens 2, Aliens was good. Alien 3 was kind of questionable. I didn't like it that much, to be honest. Alien Resurrection was kind of like a action-y flick. I did like Jonner. You know, and I'm reading, like, um, Original Sin now, so it kind of brings me closer to the characters. But for me, I think Alien Resurrection, it could have been done better. Okay, I remember seeing that with my mentor uh, back in the days, like 1990s or something like that, 1997 or something like that. Um, so it was kind of like, it was like, eh, it was okay. I liked the concept of, um, the cycle of the alien changing, but what got me is that that was like the last five minutes of the film, the last 10 minutes of the film. And you should have delved more into that, you know, instead of Ripley being like a clonish type of thing, it sh you, you should have like delved more into the cycle of the alien and, and this kind of thing. Um... And then there was Prometheus. Now, Prometheus, a lot of people don't like it because there's a lot of plot holes. Uh, but I liked it. If you don't think too much, because if you think too much, there are many plot, plot holes, right? But we got to understand that we talk about entertainment here. You're here to entertain. You're not here to, like, you're not supposed to think so much. You're supposed to sit down, be entertained. But when you start sitting down because you kind of like the film and then you start seeing some plot holes inside totally can understand uh after prometheus i'm telling you the truth after prometheus i'm totally confused like about what's going on in the alien universe like in terms of the worlds uh in terms of her uh who's that woman i forgot her name the one that takes off in a ship with the with the android with david I'm confused about some of the things that are happening because it's jumping in timelines and it's doing all this kind of stuff. But all in all, the fright factor, uh, really Scott brought that back in Prometheus. I don't care what nobody says. Like that snake scene, when he's like going back, like he gets lost in the, in the caverns and the alien ship, right? In the derelict. And he's getting lost. You know, I think he was like the science engineer, right? Or was he security or science? I forgot. I think he's science engineer. Or maybe security. I think he's security. So he's walking around and he gets lost. And then he enters into a chamber. And this big snake-like structure from the black goo attacks him. I thought uh, that this was great. It was terrifying. You know, picture yourself in a big derelict ship. You don't know what's going on. And you get lost in the ship. Everybody's left, right? I think he got lost because he, he was walking around. And he was going to go with the... Was it like two people or was it by, by himself? I think it was probably like two people, right? Like it was him and, a, and another dude. Right? Yeah, it was two dudes. And they getting lost in this thing. It would have been better if he was by himself. But they get lost and they they see some canisters. And everybody's left them, right? That was scary. That's terrifying. And, and the reason why I say it's terrifying because I still got nightmares from Xenomorphs, man. Like, 
I'm like in my 40s. I still get like periodical nightmares. I'm talking about like once, uh, maybe one to, to three times a year. When I have nightmares, it's about the xenomorph. And it's it, mainly it's about like I get stuck in a place. I'm by myself. I can't find my way out. And um, it's all xenomorphs around me. And usually what happens um, in these nightmares is I end up just dying. And then I wake up. I end up dying all the time. I don't gather up the courage to fight the thing because it's so terrifying. There is no movie that I've seen. And I love um, horror movies. Okay. Um, There's no movie that comes close to it. Uh... I mean, I grew up watching Friday the 13th. Now I'll go back and watch it. I watch through all of them. They don't scare me like they scared me before. When I was younger, they scared the hell out of me, right? Nothing. Uh, I watch Trolls. I don't know if you ever saw Trolls 2. That was the scariest thing I ever heard. And you got those little nasty-ass trolls. I used to get scared taking the garbage out downstairs. Because I worry about these little trolls coming out the garbage can and st- stick me with something and I become a troll. That don't scare me anymore. I laugh at that shit, right? Um, then you got another one. Uh, Freddy, right? Michael Myers. Um, House. I went back and watched all these these films. Uh, Ghostbusters. It wasn't really supposed to be scary, but... All the the little scary movies that we saw back in the days. And the only one that even comes close to Alien. The only one that comes close to Alien is is a Thing. Okay, the Thing is scary as hell. Okay. Um, so it's the Thing and it's Alien. But I never have nightmares about Thing. I always have the nightmares about the Alien. Why do I have the nightmares about the xenomorph? It's because the xenomorph has a personality. The thing didn't. It was just like, it just replicated people. And it was just like, I don't have nightmares about that. But um, Alien, I have nightmares about all the time. Uh, Mars, what was that? Um, what, was, what was that one called? Invasion of Mars? One of those big potato looking things. I used to scare the hell out of me. None of these things scare me. Gremlins. None of them scare me the way Alien has scared me. You can go back and watch this thing again. And it's still terrifying. And that's saying something. After 40 years, it can still terrify you. There's nothing that's like it. And so when Ridley Scott did Prometheus it was I I was like wow this is good I, I think I've watched it like 15 times okay could have been better yes it could have been better I think um Blankenkamp would have done a better job to tell you the truth okay we have to wait for you know you have to wait for for Sir Rip, Ripley to, to to go to the other side you know um, which is unfortunate because he's so vain and so uh how to say he's so like he his last movie um that he made that i saw with the the duelist the last duel that was good but people a lot of people didn't go see it he blamed everybody right he blamed the the generation them not going to see it you know and it's, it's a fact of many things of why people didn't go to see it right one is because a lot of people is, are waiting for a real alien. This is your your magnum opus, right? And he so much wants to run away from it. And I think that's why that uh, Covenant and Prometheus wasn't the best that it ever was. is because he's all tired out. And you need someone else with a, just, with a lot of enthusiasm, more enthusiasm than him to come with fresh ideas now you don't even have to think of fresh ideas you you got all these books these novels and stuff original sin i would love to see a movie about that 
I think it's, it's very good. Okay, I would love to see a movie about that. I think it would be kind of, it would be decent. Okay, if you did it right or whatever. Um, but we need new fresh ideas and Ripley, I mean, um, Ridley Scott is being, you know, Ridley Ripley. You see that? That's vain, man. They're, both of their names are, are quite similar. I think he probably envisioned himself in female form in that. Um, but he hasn't been able to 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 do what he did with the original one. Now Prometheus was good. That's what I say. Covenant. Um, in my opinion, I think it was too fast paced. I went to the movies to see that, and I'm like, it was good. You got the backbreakers coming out and all that stuff, and I like the idea. Of a lot of people don't like the idea of an uh, android making these monsters, right? Um, I think it's it's a decent idea. It's a decent idea. I think it's a good idea. Although a lot of people are disappointed because you have a lot of alien lore that you could have went to. You got alien DNA. You got um, Earth Hive. I think they got one called Earth Hive. I'm, I think I'm about to read, like, Alien DNA after this one. After Original Sin, I'm going right to Alien DNA. But you have a ton of books from Titan Books that you could do. You have Code Forge. Code Forge is, is like a classic. You got Alien Isolation. Like, excuse me. Alien Isolation came out in, like, uh, 2000, what? 2014, the game came out. You could have made a movie out of that. Like, if Ripley, I mean, Ridley, see? If Ridley Scott, he don't even acknowledge, like, alien isolation. Like, he don't say anything good about that. And I'm just like, yo, alien isolation, in my opinion, is just as good as the original alien. It's good. Okay? You could make something out of that. Like, you could have done something out of that. Like, acknowledge these people that are fans of the franchise. He doesn't acknowledge them. And he's like, I'm at the helm, but he's at the helm, but he doesn't want to do more. He's just doing it because they're giving him money, you know? So Covenant, I thought was too fast paced and it was too short. It was like a, a hour and like, what, an hour and 25 minutes? I think it was too, it was, it was too much. It wasn't, and you know, this kind of alien need to be slow burn, man. Because the slow burn is what makes it scary. It's like a slow burn. It, with alien, you can have a slow burn and not be bored. And to me, you can't be bored with alien. You can't, right? Um, so he just made it like fast pace because I think... He was thinking the, the the same way he thought when he made the uh, when he was talking about the last duel on a podcast. He was like these millennials, if you don't do things quick and fast and stuff, if they can't learn it in a TikTok video, then uh, they don't want to see anything. And so he made the movie in that vein. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hold on. Oh, sorry. I thought it turned off. So he made the video, I mean he made the movie in that vein like it's fast paced. Today's youth don't don't understand and appreciate. And you have to what you got to do is say don't care about the millennials, okay? Care about the people who went to see that. Who talk about it in the 80s. Like people like me who are in their 40s. We're going to go and see it like three or four times. You don't need to worry about that. You know, so he's too much into his feelings. And he's not focusing. He's making these movies like this. Um, you know, you know what I would wish, like, to, to tell you the truth, like, what I would wish is that Ripley would adopt the attitude of Sylvester Stallone. Okay, and why why would I say that? 
because basically Rocky 1 was the best, right? Rocky 1 was good. Rocky 2 was excellent. Okay, was even better. Rocky 3 was ho-hum. But it's still a good flick, right? Rocky 4, we remember Rock. A lot of people think probably Rocky 4 is better than Rocky 1, okay? Like, so he made a, a hum-hum one, a ho-hum one, and then he came back and made a really good one, right, with Rocky 4. And then you had, like, Rocky 5 when he's dealing with his son. And then you had Balboa, which is good. And then he just changed it all around and made Creed, right? And then you have Creed 2. And then you, you're going to have another Creed coming out. And then he made something called the Expendables, and he got Rambo. So he keeps doing it. He doesn't look down uh, kind of upon his work and said, oh, I'm done. No, he's going to keep making them if people keep wanting it. Because you got a lot of Rocky fans. You got a lot of Rambo fans. You got a lot of Expendable fans. He does, he'll keep making them. And their quality works. You saw what he did with the Expendable. He's bringing, like, every super actor and actress action stars into one film you gotta adopt the attitude of like Sylvester Stallone I do not like when I look at Sylvester Stallone's game I respect it so much like he just keep on making it like Rocky 5 Rocky 6 Rocky 7 he's like just throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks right and a a lot of it happens to stick because he doesn't look at his work and, and say, okay, I did this. Now I'm going to move on and do something else. He says, this is what made me famous. I never can look ahead. I must look at Rocky and say, this is what made me successful. And I respect this work and I want to keep entertaining. Right? Right? If it's a dud, I'll just make another one and this another one and another one. As long as you have a, a cont- and this is what really Scott should be doing, and what he's doing, he's just acting like a pompous asshole and he's just messing up the franchise. Um, I think that you know, like I said, Prometheus is a good film, but it could be better. Covenant is too fast, although I liked it. I watch it again and again. But this woman that he got, so he killed off the girl, the woman from, um, what's her name? She was really good. Rapice, right? Naomi Rapice. She was really good. It was good. She was the new heroine. Why'd you kill her off? Like, what is in your brain? What's going on with you? Right? And then, so he brings in another girl, and now we're starting all over again with another girl. And then, why all of them got it? Why all... Of these people have to be women that are fighting these xenomorphs. They can't be men uh, as a hero or something like this. If you're going to keep Naomi Rapace, keep her. So he messed up the franchise when he went and did like Covenant. And was just like, it didn't really. What was good though, what was really good and scary was the... um, the DVD extras. That was good when it explained David and his motivations and all that stuff. I like the premise of it. It's just, to me, it's like it wasn't enough. It's something you need more. It's something more that you need. You know, it's missing something. It's missing something. And Michael Fassbender, perfect for the role, okay? But... I don't know. It's you know, it's just something uh, you're missing. You know, something you're missing, and, and you're messing it up. And uh, I think he's gonna do another one. He's gonna make another alien. And I'm like, yo, this dude is like 80 freaking. When he makes the next aliens, he's gonna be like 86. Like he gonna be damn near senile. He's mad at everything. He's like an angry old man. It's like. Yo, step aside and get that sh- give that junk to Blunken Camp and let him do his thing. Like, let him do his thing. And, and that's what's pissing me off, you know, about this this franchise. Because it could be so much better. You got a whole universe you could be doing stuff on. Just like with Star Wars. Like, they keep messing it up. Like, you got a whole universe of books. 
You could have did a whole trilogy on Bane. Who's that dude? The the rule of two. I think his name is Bane. Darth Bane or something like that. I forgot his name. But the most powerful Sith of all time. You could have did a whole thing of that. You didn't need to do all this with Kevin Feigl messing everything up and doing. Listen to the fans, you know. And so, you know, these people are not listening to the fans. Hopefully, I think no Harley will listen to the fans. At the end, it's all about money, right? If they can make money on this. If I was a studio, I would just don't care about money for right now. Just keep on making them. But just make sure you make one that's quality, right? Maybe the Alien 5 is it's not the greatest. But then you come with another one two or three years later. Let people get into, into it. Okay, because the Xenomorph still terrifies me. And if you keep messing up, after a while, it's not going to terrify anybody. And we're just going to walk off and and, and find a, some other kind of entity to be super frightened about. Right? I tried to get frightened over, um, what's this other alien? Kelvin, because Kelvin was kind of scary, but the way it looked, like, you didn't have all the pieces together. Like, this guy, um, Geiger, H.R. Geiger, he just, he hit the nail on the head. It was all things came into the right order and time, and it made something truly terrifying. With Kelvin, you can't really... This, to me, it's not a terrifying animal. It's just an interesting um, movie. We need a better alien. We do. So, this is uh, mostly sci-fi. I think I'm going to have that to you. Chapter 17. Uh, because tomorrow... I What do I have to do tomorrow? Tomorrow in China is Friday. No, tomorrow's Thursday. Sorry. And Thursday, I got to work. Um, maybe, and then Saturday, I'm going out with my friends. I think I could do, I could finish it on Sunday, but I'm not sure. Probably Monday. You're going to get it on Monday. On Monday, you'll get it. Don't forget to hit the, the, uh, the Hellraiser. Sorry. I tried to bring it up, but I'm in a room that the the um, the internet connection is not very good. But uh, go listen to my please go listen support that please. I don't have a lot of people. I've lost a lot of subscribers because I took a hiatus because the conditions weren't right. But uh, go check out my Hellraiser. Okay, there's the the Hellbound Heart. I think I did a better job than um, Mr. H Reviews, although I respect him. I love his work. Okay, he's a motivational. He's a motivation to me. Uh, I, I love his work, but in all honestly, honesty, I think I did a better job because of the fact that I did do voices for the Cenobites. Okay, while his voices are the same voice from him, I actually, like... I'm doing voices of each and every Cenobite, Cenobite. Okay? And I think it's, it's clearer. My pronunciation may not be the best. Because, you know, sometimes you, people complain about my pronu pronunciation. And, and one of the reasons because I got a gap in my teeth. I got a, a freaking big gap in my uh, between my front teeth. So sometimes words come out kind of weird. And this is something I cannot help. You know? I got a big gap. It's, it's about a, I would say like a half an inch apart. So maybe one third an inch apart. And so those, like that, is kind of hard sometimes. But it's, I think it's a cleaner version. And I'm, I'm doing the voice of the Cenobites. <laughs> so I, th I think my version is better. And I'm going to do uh, chapter four, probably on Monday. Yeah. Because I'm really enjoying that. 
And then the next thing I'm doing after, I should be finished with uh, Alien uh, Original Sin before next week is out. That's done. Okay. And so the week after that, which probably will be like almost Christmas time, then we get into DNA. I think that it's called the DNA War because it's a, a, a omnibus that I'm reading. So then I'm going to go to that. And then after DNA War, I'm looking ahead. So after DNA War, then I'm going to, to others. Uh, I know there's another guy called Mouth of the, of the Lizard. Uh, we are not in competition. I don't have a problem with Mouth of, of the Lizard. He's doing very well. His reading is really good. Um, so I'm not going to redo stuff that he's doing. So whatever he says he's going to do, I don't know if he's going to do another novel because he finished two. I'm not going to do that novel, you know, just out of respect for him. And this out of res is like it's a waste of time because he's, you know, he's doing a pretty good job uh, reading. So the novels he's doing, I'm going to try to avoid. Um, but I would like, you know, if you like it and stuff, just comment. This Your comments are the fuel, right? So if I'm making like, because I see I'm making like, I'm making these videos like every other day. You don't know how much editing that takes. It takes a lot of editing. It takes a lot of time. Uh, an hour and a half to record it. Editing and another stuff is another hour and a half. That's like three hours per chapter, basically. And I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting any money for it. Um, but I would like comments like, yo, this is good or this is bad or, or oh, that's awesome or this this part of this uh, part of the of the novel is very interesting or this is scary any kind of comment or something because if somebody's reading something with books like this like you need kind of acknowledgement that there are people listening that's why I stopped the first time because it was just like I'm doing these things and then I got a lot of people complaining and stuff and I'm like I'm kind of trying to get into my groove because this is my first book actually narrating right trying to do a professional narration it's my first book you got to give me time to to get my groove and some people are just like bang bang you should have did this you should have did that and i'm just like eh, you know meh okay i'll try it, whatever right and as it was getting better you, you know you're getting less and less comments and stuff i'm kind of sensitive to that because it's like yo i got two kids I could be doing other stuff, you know. Uh, I got other things I could be reading or doing other things elsewhere. So it's just like, just throw me, throw me a hint of appreciation. That's all, you know. It's easy, and I'm not blaming it on on the fans. I'm just saying that when the fans are silent, a person doesn't know if he's doing good or not. You know, they don't know if they're doing well if no one's saying anything. Um, so that's all I want to say, and. If you like what I'm doing, if you you know kind of appreciate what I'm doing, hit me off in the in the in the Patreon. I'll I'll put it up later after I finish reading this because I think I shouldn't even be asking for money after the way I abandoned the the series, you know. So I shouldn't be asking for money. So that's why I'm not even asking for anything. But you know, during the DNA war, when I do the DNA war, it'd be I would appreciate it if. Um, I could get, you know, one or two dollars a month or whatever, because I'm going to go through everything. I'm also going to do the Wayland Yutani report. So I'm going to do that in my own thing. And they got something called Parallax. It's something called Parallax Photo Shopping, which means that the images in a book move, right? So when I was doing Alien, um, the Whalen Utani report, I was paying like 50 bucks for that because you got to get professionals to do that, to like to make the animals move and all that stuff on a on a page, right? You got to pay for that. So I was I paid like hundred hundred something dollars because I did like two. I think I did one and I paid like 40, 50 bucks, right? And hardly no one made any comments. So I was like, damn, I just spent like 40, 50 bucks on that, right? So, like, you know, in the next things I'm doing after that, I would appreciate some kind of 
donations if it's possible you know i'm gonna put out the donation links later not right now uh and another thing what else i want to say uh hold on i want to say something else oh another thing i want to talk about is why i'm not monetized so if if i was monetized i wouldn't ask anybody for anything and the only reason why i'm not monetized is um because I have a chance to, to be monetized. They give me, like, a chance. They just, like, erase all that other stuff. There's a book by, um, Jesus, gosh. Okay. One of the reasons why I'm not monetized is because of this. Um, because I uploaded this. This is by Octavia E. Butler. It's called uh, Kindred. And a lot of students... It's, it's this book that I uploaded has become a movement, okay? So you can see the views and it's become a movement where if I deleted it, a lot of people will just be disappointed because Octavia Butler died, I think she died in like 2015. She fell off her uh, a ladder on a roof and she, she, I forgot what happened. Like she really hurt herself and then she died. She has no children, no relatives to give her proceeds to. She actually gave all her work to a nonprofit organization that just houses her literature, which lots of, of authors give their work to this certain organization. Okay, so they're nonprofit driven, right? Um, but I guess they lend the rights out to, to people like uh, Audible. And so I put up this book because it's, I, I think it's kind of expensive, like like $18, $19 or something to listen to. And I just put it up because, you know, I thought it was an interesting novel and because I really adore uh, Octavia Butler, you know. And there's just so many, like, comments that are just saying, oh, please, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, look, reading because I, I, you know, I love her work. Oh my God, thank you. This is definitely going to help with my uni course. So a lot of people have been taking this because of the university course, right? Um, because they got to read in high school, you know. And so if I delete this, then. It's just, I think it's just taking something away from the community, all right? She, she's not getting a profit for this. She's already died. She doesn't have a family. It's different from alien novels when I was uploading those. You know, I was taking money out of people's mouths, which I feel kind of guilty about, you know. Um, but this one is just for the people. And so this is probably the reason why I can't get monetized because they're like, well, you got something on here that's, that you're not supposed to get, be getting money for, right? And this is the reason. It's this. So this is. I'm not gonna take it off because it's it's like it's like a movement. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why I asked for like donations for reading, but not now. When I start DNA War, uh, hopefully people can contribute just a little bit, like a dollar, two dollars a month, whatever. I'll keep on going. A dollar a month will just let. I'll keep on going. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so. You know, I got kids to feed. You know? <laughs> but anyway, um, I got to leave. This has been a very long one. This is mostly sci-fi. I'm out. Mostly sci-fi. Mostly.